Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Hey, just like me, we long to be close to you. <laughs> welcome, 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 wherever you may be, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching on Instagram, whether you're watching on uh, let's see, Facebook. Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Twitter Live, or LinkedIn Live, or whether you're watching on YouTube, or what, X. X is Twitter. And and whether you're watching on the replay, a lot of folks watch on the replay, and we are grateful for each and every person who watches from wherever you watch, whenever you watch, welcome. If you're a first timer, we want to say welcome, first timers. Uh, we are if here. Chance, if it's first time and you're live, put first time. Yeah, if you're first chat. time, put it in the chat for us. That's, you right. hear about us. That's correct. How you hear about it, how you put it in the chat. All right. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly. This is Dee. And this is Dee Taylor Jolly. We're the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. Uh, I am also blessed to have a few other books under my belt. <clears throat> it only takes a minute to change your life. A setback is a set up for a comeback. Turn setbacks into greenbacks, an attitude of excellence. But this book, this book is the first one I get blessed, or I was blessed to get the opportunity to write it with my bride. And we've been married for going on 40 years, haven't had an argument in over 37 years. And we tell people the first couple of years are like World War III, but we learned some wise principles from some wise mentors who gave us a new perspective about life, about love, and about being able to get and be happily married. So our yeah. topic this evening. Woo, this is a this is a great topic and a both profound topic. So we were asked to comment on this particular situation. Yes. And the basic topic is a secret escape plan. Mm. Money that your spouse doesn't know about. Mm. All right. Okay. Tell me story. Tell the story. Tell so the story. The wife has hidden $47,000 from her husband while he's been working two jobs. Mm. And when they got married, they've been married for seven years. He said, you don't have to work. Mm. I will take care of you. Wow. But secretly, her mama told her. Her mama told her. Her mama told her, 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 mama told her before she got married. Before she got married. That, and her mother did give her $20,000. Gave her twenty grand. And said, here is money for a rainy day. And to establish your escape fund. Mm. Don't know when something might mess up. And she's been adding to it mm. for the last seven years. So that's how she has $47,000. But then something happened. Mm. The husband, who was a six figure earner, got injured on the job. Yep. At the hospital bills and everything. And they filed a suit and he did not win. Um, so they were strapped for cash. And instead of her saving, she said like $750 a month, she was only saving like $250 a month. But he was then having to work. He was injured. He, he, he had to find a, a, another job that didn't pay as much. He's working two full-time jobs and does Uber. To mm. try and support her and give, and give her the life that she wants. Go Correct. ahead, just go, keep going. Correct. And so, and she manages the household expenses. Mm. So he's not looking at the checking accounts or the savings accounts on a regular basis. Mm. And so whatever he's bringing in, she then is still taking her portion, a portion of that and putting it in her- Escape fund. Her
So we all disappeared. Wow, we had, we disappeared for a minute. So we're sorry. sorry for that. So here's what happened. Go back to, I think it was around when you said, go back to- The two jobs were killing it. No, so, so he, he had a- uh, He had a six-figure income. Uh, he had on. an accident. He lost that. They filed a lawsuit, didn't win. So now he's got to find uh, a job, another job to maintain that lifestyle. He ended up working two full-time jobs and doing Uber. Comes home and says, this is killing me. We need to downsize. We need to downsize. He's telling her, we need to downsize our expenses because I am working like a just a like a just a, 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 a beaver here, and I am just exhausted. Uh, exhausted. I'm working myself to the bone but his to take care of you. Was that his wife should not have to work, mm. and she didn't have a problem with that. But he says, "Well, this is a lifestyle that I promised you." Mm -hmm. But then he's he's exhausted. He says, "Let's downsize." She says, "No, I don't want to downsize." You have to figure out something else. He says the job is killing me. Let me look at the expenses. Yes. So, so she's the keeper, right, of the finances. Right. So looks at this. Where's this money? Where is this money going? Right. Where I'm is this? Not, I'm not familiar with this account. And she has to fess up and and tell him that she has a secret account. Ooh. And she says, "But my mama said." My mama. My said, mama said. My mama said that. You better have some mad money, some escape money. So you saying all this time I'm working two jobs, struggling, I've lost a six figure income. I've been hospitalized. It's been the frustration of up and down. And you have forty seven thousand dollars in a secret fund that you did not share with me. Mm -hmm. He cried. He, he weeps. So he upset. cries. He cries. He, he, he left. What did, well, so he was going to his brother's house. Going to his brother's house. So we don't know. And then the question becomes, what was I a terrible spouse to do this? Was I? Now? She asked, was was I wrong to do this? I mean, my mama told me this is what I should do in case something like this happened. Look, he's gone to his brother's, and so in case no, in case like something would happen. That he goes to his brothers. That he leaves because him. Oh, she kept a oh, secret. But in case they didn't tell what the reason that it did, he left and went to his brother. See, in case he goes and leaves and goes to his brothers, I should have this account. That's her thinking. The question is, the question she prompted is, it. Oh, yeah, well, you hold, hold, hold. You, We got to get to what she said, and then we will talk about whether it makes sense or not. Or the, or the. So she said. My mama told me, always have an escape fund because stuff happens in marriages. She had been in a bad marriage. The key was a secret. And and yeah. and so I better have my own in case everything goes crazy. In so she then when when it went, when he found out and he left. And he cried and he left and went to his brothers. She asked the question. Do you think this is bad? Do you think this? So I want y'all's comments. I want your thoughts. We're going to give you ours. This was terrible. Just terrible. It was. It was an integrity issue. Um, financial infidelity. Financial infidelity. It was a, a a lack of trust, lack of honesty. Okay, a lack of honesty, and is listening to your well, mama. Oh, hold on, let me finish. Listening to your your mama, who obviously was not a person who had been happily married. Boom. Now you can say whatever you want. Okay, it's financial infidelity because you're keeping secrets. Yep. It's a lack of trust. Yeah. And it, I, he never asked her about it. And mm -hmm. she never volunteered. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. And he wept. wept. And he's working like a little beaver. He working two, three jobs trying to trying to take care of her. So and he was she so he was emotionally crushed. Crushed. That was a major secret. Now, of course, I did a little bit of, uh, of background information. Oh, there's a survey. Oh, you did it on that on this 
issue on the so, issue on the topic of, of the, the topic of okay holding secrets or dealing with financial infidelity okay mm -hmm. and like bankrate.com which deals with everything about money and all this kind of stuff found that 90 that 39 percent of adults who are married or in what they call a civil partnership not married but living together okay mm -hmm. Admit to having kept a financial secret from their partner. Now, the financial secret could be anything from I have a credit card account and I haven't told them. I'm buying stuff, I'm shopping it, I'm keeping it in the car and sneaking it in the house. That falls under the category of, of keeping secrets and kind of financial fidelity. You're not coming clean. Mm. Okay. Or you, you have investments in the like and you're not sharing it. That's called financial infidelity. Mm. And 52% of the respondents say that financial cheating is as bad as physical cheating. Financial cheating is as bad as having 52% of that or 32% of the respondents mm. in the survey said that financial cheating, they said they felt that financial cheating was the same as- Was as bad as? As bad as uh, physical having a physical affair on their mate, okay? Mm. Mm. But 39% of the adult survey said, 39% said they do keep financial secrets. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Wow. So that 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 that, that aligns with what we, we've said. 50% of marriages break up in America. Of the 50% that remain, 40% of those people are miserable. 39% of married who are married, that would be that 40% who are miserable, don't trust, and are having financial secrets. And so, so, so if you're having a secret, it has something to do with a lack of communication. Mm. A lack of communication says a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. You don't know, you don't, you don't even know how to approach the, the uncomfortable topic. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. So, so how do you get, so the counselors who are faced with this issue say that the first thing that you should do is you've got to figure out how to communicate, which is what we say. Marriages break up for sex, money, and communication. Say it again. Marriages break up for three things. One of three things. Sex, money, communication. Sex, money, Communication and a common thread, of course, is communication. And communication is verbal, nonverbal. Uh, that includes the body language. It includes how you say what you say. Mm. All of that. Okay. Right. So, so we're in agreement with the counselors that say you got to figure out how to talk to each other, and it's a difficult thing. So, how, how do you even approach the subject? Then you have to deal with that. People, couples, individuals have different financial personalities. Right. And we talked about that, about different financial styles. You know, some are uh, are savers, mm. some are spenders, some are gamblers, right? We talked about that. Some are agnostic, mm. growing up, you know, just, just, no just don't care. We have it, not so much agnostic as a, a uh, indifferent. That's the right word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have all of those factors. And then what kind of home did you come from? Those are like part of the kind of conversations that if you're not really aware of it, you need to go back and analyze well, what caused me. In this case, she clearly said, my mama taught me. Mama conditioned her and taught her so and the said, kind of home your daddy was no good. Well, you we better, did, we I'm know. just giving you what the, the probably the conversation well, I'm just giving you a synopsis and she talked bad about the daddy they had a bad marriage and so she said I, I say to you baby I got an escape fund and when things get bad I can escape and you should have an escape fund put away because you don't know if stuff gonna get bad and so far so, that, so, that go, so that goes with the concept that goes along with the concept of people who say I'm a try and be, have a, 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 and be married. I'm going to give marriage a try. So you're already giving yourself an out, an excuse, a, 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 a you know, the old, there's an old axiom about the general 
whose troops were going to a distant land for a big battle. And they got off the boat and they went to the land. And when they got to the land, they saw they were outnumbered. And he saw trepidation and fear in their eyes. So he said to his other officers, burn the boats. Burn the boats. We either going to win or we die here. And once they got a no escape mindset, they won the battle. What we say to married couples, that they're going to be challenges. They're going to be difficulties. They're going to be problems. But you got to be committed to staying in there and working through them. And then when you do, you're strengthening the marriage. When I married my wife, I told her that this is for life. And you do have an escape. You can die. <laughs> you die, you're good to go. Other than that, we in this till death do us part. And so we've had challenges. We've had difficulty. We've gone through some tough moments, but we work through them, right? And I'm not talking about tough moments where we are, where we are, think about divorce, tough moments of losing our parents, tough moments of, of having uh, in business together. In business and together. paying a consultant because he's super cheap. Yeah. The cost being what he anticipated. He had yep. To and go she take a drive. I had to take a drive because I told her what the budget was, and she she came back with a no, budget like five no, times no, what no, it was. No, I had to go drink no, a drive. Whatever. No, it was way over. It, it was over. The number significantly of hours was over. over. If it was a dollar over, you no, it, it was significantly <laughs> over, and I had to take a drive. You I'm out to, there. You had to leave home. I had to go, go take there. A drive. So let me give you a story in the book that I want to read. Our dear friends Stephen and Andy Bullock shared a compelling story about teamwork because it takes teamwork to make the dream work. He was divorced. She had never been married. Both were successful professionals. When they married, they also established uh, what we call a three-pot approach to their marriage financial management. He, 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 he kept his checking account. She kept her checking account. They put their names on each other's checking account. But then they, third, they created a third account, the third pot, which was for household expenses. He's an attorney, has his own law firm. And sometime after they got married, he had a big case. And it took all of his time and resources. While waiting for the case to settle, he, he personally funded his business from his savings. The deal took much, much longer than he anticipated to close. And he ended up with an empty bank account. Reluctantly, he told his wife, and she said, don't worry, I got you. We end this together. The deal eventually came through, and the first check he wrote was a big check to his wife. The money not only repaid her financial investment in him, but also thanked her for her faith in him. He emphasized the power of working as a team when it comes to financial matters. Folks, that's the story that I think this wife, she should have read the book. She should have had the book. They should have had the book, but she should have read the book and understand that when you leave your mama, you know, when, you, when you're a child, you think like a child, you act like a child. But when you become an adult, you put away childish things and then you leave, cleave and weave. You leave your parents home, you cleave together and then you weave a new culture together. And because that was the way your parents did it does not mean that's the way you've got to weave your culture. You can take aspects, you can learn lessons, but y'all have a, a different culture because you got two different people who come from two different lifestyles, two different perspectives. And so y'all got to work together to cleave and weave a new You have new, to talk. And you got to talk about it. Especially those things that are uncomfortable. Yes. And yeah. what you bring to the table. This is how I say, oh, you, you, you put cash in envelopes. You know, there are a lot of people who still do that. I know a couple who, who they put their spending cash in envelopes. And when that cash is over, they can't spend no more. 
They can't go in and keep putting on a debit card mm -hmm. and then getting into financial or on a credit card and getting the finance. Here's the budget. The budget says we have this much money to spend on on our recreation, movies, whatever it is. When that money is gone, you can't go and put it on a debit card or credit card or hit the emergency fund. No, that's Some not. couples have, here's the amount that we agree that we can spend without talking to each other about it. For some, it's $100. You know, I can go spend $100 mm. on whatever I want, but anything larger than that, we need to talk about it. We but that's usually uh, the one part. I don't know that. All right, but that's usually the one. To, I, don't, I don't know that. Even if it's what it's... Do, do, hold, hold, hold. We don't have... One, we, two, or three. Oh, well, that explains to people who, okay. who, who okay. might not have the book. Uh, we have... We interview lots of people, lots and lots and lots of people about finances. There's a book in the, there's a chapter in the book, last chapter, Money Matters. Okay. When you marry sometime, marry somebody, it's not just a love relationship, it's a business relationship. It's a merger between two entities. It's a merger. Y'all do different stuff with how you do money. And so you got three Marriage uh, is a business relationship. Right. So you got three ways we found that people did their money. There are three options. There was one pot. That typically happened for people right out of high school, right out of college, who has enough, who have nothing, and they come together and they put all the money into one pot. And then somebody takes uh, responsibility of paying the bills and managing that that money. Then you got the two pot. It's typically a little older, uh, and they are people who might have an apartment and might have a car note who get married in their late twenties, early thirties, and so now they got. Two incomes, but what many of them do, including some of our friends, they 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 uh, they split the bills. One takes the mortgage, one takes the utilities, one takes the food, one takes this. All right. But our friend Michelle Singletary doesn't like that because she says it's like having being roommates. Roommates. But then it's number three. With the third option is what we call the, th the 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 three pot option, and that's what we did from day one. We have never had an argument, not one, about money in our marriage. Now, she just mentioned about the business. I was upset about the business, but we have never had an argument about our money because I I, I said to her, look, look, she was older. I was older. I had a checking account. She had a checking account. She was used to doing things her own way. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to keep my checking account, put you on my checking account. I'm, you put me on your checking account. And then we know that we have our income coming to that checking account. Then we both make a contribution to a third pot, a whole household account, and we have a budget there. What do we need? And if we need more money, we can then each put into that. But more importantly, I don't have to ask her about the, the money she got in there to go buy some shoes, nor does she have to t talk about when I go get a new tech toy or something. She, and, and, and we don't argue about that because we are taking care of the household bills, and we both are, are see each other's account on our computer. I think that's the key also. Yeah, we also see each other's accounts. We right? see all of the accounts. Yes. You can see everything. So even though we have the household, we have the, the individual accounts at the actually at the same bank. Yep. So, but we get to see all these. So, accounts. Michelle Singletary, Color of Money, syndicated columnist, she said what this woman do, did was... She had hidden accounts. You should never, ever have hidden accounts. A good marriage is not built on dishonesty. And so, so if you're going to hide the money, and here's the other thing, he was struggling for a while. Right. This is this is several years, right? Right. So and if it, you would hide that, hmm. what else? Right. If you're dishonest about that, what else would you be dishonest about? Mm -hmm. This is terrible and it stems from bad counsel. Bad counsel from the mother. The mother started this. She was wrong. She told her daughter wrong stuff. The daughter loved the mother and, and, and took the advice of the mother. The mother, it's like a lady one day came, I met at a radio station who told me, you know, you Mr. Positive. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't know the woman, okay? I said, what? She said, I don't like you. And my mama told me I did not have to like everybody. <laughs> I said, okay, thank you. I walked away saying to myself, your mama was an idiot and you're an idiot. <laughs> because her mama was an idiot, she 
conveyed that idiocy or that idiotic thinking to her daughter who became an idiot. This woman, her mama was an idiot. All right. That was bad thinking. And it's unkind to call her idiot's mama. Okay. She's probably suffering. In, in, in a that's an idiot way. if you. Uh, no, that's. that's she was sharing what she thought was. Well, okay. Right. Okay. Let me retract that. Child. Let me retract it. Not idiot. Her mama was wrong. Yes. And she, she, was wrong. she was wrong. That's bad counsel for creating a great marriage. Yes. You must not be hiding accounts. It's going to come back to bite you. And that's what happened. So I think here. there's another lesson there, though. Y'all yeah, agree with me, don't you? It's fair. Victoria says, sounds fair to her. I said, that's right. The lesson. So who do you take? You, you love your, your, your parents. Mm -hmm. But as you're moving into a relationship, where your mother was unsuccessful, would you listen and take her counsel only? Mm. That would raise the question where I need to be exposed to some people who are doing marriage successfully. One more story. One more story. Gladys Pemberton, tell Ron to get near the computer. I know you're watching. Our friends, Ron and Gladys Pemberton, used a three-part approach and shared how they had had to make major adjustments when they first got married. They started by setting short-term and long-term goals to achieve what they wanted to accomplish and a budget that they would use to accomplish those goals. Ron says that a critical component... Hey, dear, I'm here. Okay, Glad, I'm reading your story out the book. So Ron says that a critical component of their success after setting the budget was to go from a me, me, me mindset to a we, we, we mindset. This is so good. This is so good. Now, he confessed that it took him a while to figure that out. A major mistake in the first few years of their marriage helped him realize the importance of a we mindset. Ron loves, not like, I have in here like new cars. Ron loves cars. He is a car guy. I've learned so much about cars from him. And, and when he was single, he typically bought a brand new car every year. One day, he saw a beautiful new Mercedes. And he rode as he rode by a dealership, and he stopped and talked to the salesman. He said to himself, this would be great for me and Gladys to ride around in. So he bought the car. When he got home, he was all happy. He showed Gladys the new car because he was so happy, but she was not happy. They had a baby on the way. He had not talked to her about buying the car. She reminded him that they were a team. And even though they used the three-part approach to managing their money, their decisions were to be made as a team of we. He said that was the first and last time he made a major financial decision without talking to his wife. The most important lesson here is the value of communication, collaboration, and teamwork. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. They've been married for 46, 47, 48 years, somewhere like that. I mean, a long time. They've been married, happily married. They are a great model of marriage. They have a ministry of helping uh, people who have dementia. And, uh, and Gladys, by the way, today I, I, I was asked to be the chairperson of the One Life Fitness uh, Annual Fundraiser for Dementia Patients. Alzheimer's. And I honestly, uh, honestly, I said I was honored to do it, and I thought of you guys. And that's and, coming up in June. In June. And okay. so I'm going to be the chairperson of that. So anyway, uh, Victoria. 46 years. 46 years. Wow. So Jeron and Gladys, 46 years, and what a great story, and what a great lesson. So that's why I say to this, this lady, if you're watching, ma'am, first, I apologize for calling your mama idiot. Yes. Okay, I'll take yes. that back. She was, that. she was wrong. She was expressing... She she was wrong what? for teaching you a bad policy. It's a bad principle. The principle must be good. But that's all she knew to provide security that's for herself. Bad. It's just bad. And, and it, and it, I and understand it, that. And, it, and, it, and it's preparing your daughter for failure. It's setting them up for failure. It's giving your daughter out. Let's see. Victoria said, my dad worked for the post office during the 70s and 80s. And he said that a woman should have her own bank account, including including a post office box to have 
statements sent to the post office box. Keep a saving account to buy your own way to anything desired. Uh, uh, Victoria, I understand that that's the old way of thinking. Your dad was the old way of thinking, but we, we but believe. But did you share that information? You should, your... if, even if you have it, you got to share it. It should not be secret. No secret accounts. No secret. Now, again, that, Victoria, that's not much different than D having her account. I having her, my account. D has her money in her, in her account and she go buy her shoes or whatever. I don't care. But I know the money's there. Okay. And if I were in a tight squeeze and if it was a tough moment, I'd say D. And she's done that over the years as a well, mm -hmm. as we we built this business, we had to move money around. Had to move money around. One time we had, a, and she took money out of her account and loaned it to the business. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. so anyway, folks, this is a very critical. I'm so the, glad. The goal is to not keep secrets. No secrets. No secrets. It, it's because just not if good. you keep a, a major secret like the financial, what else are you not going to share? And it comes down to how much can I trust you? That's right. Let me really read what Gladys just wrote. She said, uh, we have been man able to manage our funds and been able to work together, save, travel, and have a few dollars for unexpected situation. Mm -hmm. they, and a few dollars, a, a, a nice few dollars. That's very humble of them because they have done well. He was a very successful IT salesman. She was an educator. They've done well. They have children and grandchildren. They're able to go visit their grandchildren in California. They recently got back from San Francisco. They love going to Hawaii because they work together. Folks, that's what we want you to do. That's the whole premise. The principle. Marriage is principle based it's principle based you learn the principles and you use the principle to build a strong healthy marriage it's principle it's not bad policy that bad, bad policy and this was bad policy and so i'm saying but to, she i i want to emphasize she shared what she knew that is why it is important to have mentors to gather more information so that as your situation changes, you have to look to those who appear to have. I'm telling people, go get know, the book. because they to appear they, they, to have what you want, but you have to do your own investigation. So you need mentors. This is a book of mentorship. We do not do coaching. We do mentorship. We mentor. The what two ways, two ways to get to any goal, mentors and mistakes. Mentors are people who have done what you want to do and will tell you, hey, just do it like we do it. We know. Walk alongside and we'll show we'll you. We'll show you or we'll give you how advice. Works, everything and how we manage to do it. And so you get mentors, okay? Get mentors. This is a book of mentorship. Everybody should have this book in your library. You should have, if you're married, two copies, one for each of you. Read it together. Grow together. Go to jollymarriage.com. Jollymarriage.com. Get two copies or get the bundle. We want you to have a successful marriage. But look, the Bible says that there's safety in a multitude of counselors and that many people are lost for a lack of wisdom. Okay. So you have to get wise counsel. You got to get And it. sometimes it, it will end up being outside of your immediate family, your immediate family. And don't take wise counsel from people who have not done what you want to do. A lot of folks listen to single friends. What should I do? Don't listen to single unhappy friends to tell them how to have a successful marriage. Don't do it. It's not a good idea. So find people who are mentors who have done what you want to do and learn from them. Ask successfully. them. Successfully. 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 So. Go to jollymarriage.com, watch the TED Talk, and then get at least two books together. Do it right now, jollymarriage.com, and get the bundle, which is two books, two workbooks, an audio book, and an audio CD, and a DVD, and it will, uh, audio seminar and CD, and it will grow your relationship a lot cheaper than okay, a well, divorce time, lawyer. I know. Supposed to mention what am I supposed to mention? About... Oh, Aunt Dolores. Folks. This is Women's History Month. Yep. Ooh, Victoria, so you need to write a book for us single people. Great, great 
lead into this conversation. Oh my goodness. Great leader. You yes. just don't know, Victoria, how, yes. how timely yes. you were. Because Dee wanted me to talk about it. On Friday, on Thursday, I was riding my bike. And the Lord led me, I have to give it to the Lord, give, I give him the credit, led me to go a different way than I usually go. And I rode by a neighbor who I usually just wave at. And she was in her yard. I came back, I rode past and I came back because the Lord said, go back and talk to her. I talked to her. Her name was Aunt Dolores. Well, her name is Dolores. And she said people call her Aunt Dolores or, 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 or the mother of the neighborhood. Anyway, she told me about her life. I just didn't it. You saw this. You saw it. She saw it. Victoria saw wow. it. So many people have seen this. Aunt Dolores is 96 years old, has never been married has been living in her home and has a, no children. Had no children. Living in her home in a high end part of the city for 70 years. She bought the house when she was 23. And, and then you could not buy a house a single as woman. a single woman. Single woman in could, DC. 70 years ago, a single <gasps> woman could not buy a house. Uh, buy, so her broker did something at at settlement. He told them that her husband was buying the house in her name because they were to her upcoming husband, her husband to be was coming buying the house in her name so that, that they get ready to get married. And I said to her afterwards, I said, You ever got married? She said, Not to this time. <laughs> 96. Oh, she's glamorous. She's beautiful. And, and she's feisty. And I she, love it. I love it. And she's 96. And the video has gone incredible i want you all go to my social media look for the interview with aunt dolores any social media any of my social media uh facebook uh, uh ig uh tick tock uh, uh linkedin it's all over the place we had over a hundred and fifty thousand views in in 24 hours hundred. We never had it's gone viral. Share with everybody you know. It's encouraging. We got a call today from the mayor's office. They want to invite her to a special women's history event. I had to go over to her house. I didn't have her number. I had to go to her house and give her. She and I walked in and they rang the doorbell. She said, "Doctor Jolly, what have you done?" Everybody's calling me. I said, you heard about it. Oh my God, my family all over the country calling me. I said, I made you a star. That's what I've done. So she, she laughed. She said, thank you. History maker. Oh Somebody my God. We know a local person. Incredible. So thank you, Victoria, for yeah. leading us into that. And so everybody go watch that and do me a favor, share it. Share it with Lottie Dottie and everybody. We want to make this a million. Our goal is that a million people will see this video as we launch more of these to help more people. How hope this was a good show for y'all. It was something we've been looking forward to, to sharing with you about this topic. And we hope that you will tell everybody you know. Join us next Monday night, 9 o'clock. We're in town next Monday night, aren't we? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm on my way to Utah. Utah, Salt Lake City this week. Yeah, for He's those folks, without me. I'm going without her. Well, I never travel without her, but she has her doctor's appointments on, uh, or her women's doctor appointments. Thank you, dear. All right. Anyway, the world. all right. On on this <laughs> while I'm gone. So, um, so I'm going by myself. I, I'll be sad, but I'll make it because I'm going to get that money. All right. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll be speaking in Salt Lake City, and then we'll be back here next week for this. Have a great week on purpose. This Palm is Palm Sunday's coming up. Palm Sunday's coming up. Is it this Sunday? Yes, this yes, Sunday. Yes. Uh, Palm Sunday mm -hmm. this Sunday. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this week. Uh, have a great week on purpose. Remember, go see the TED Talk and get the book at jollymarriage.com and then just love somebody. Love somebody and talk, talk, talk. This is Dr. Willie Jolly and, this is and we'll see y'all next week. We're going out with music from my jazz album. You can see that on my website, williejolly.com slash jazz. Here we go with one of my favorites, Close to You. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.